Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today I want to talk about the latest image from Raspberry Pi, which is called Pixel, short for Pi Improved X Windows Environment Lightweight. So let's get started. So guys, I'm not going to show you how to install this into an SD card. I'm going to leave a link above for our previous videos that I've done this before. But I am going to show you where you can download or update the current Jesse system to Pixel. Now, once you navigate over to this website, and I'll leave a link in the description below, you scroll down to the bottom and actually give you the steps on how to update the current Jesse system to Pixel. Now, I'm going to be leaving a link below that's going to take you directly to where you can download the current image for Pixel. All right guys, so here we have it, the new boot screen. Now what they did change is they got rid of the cryptic text that you would normally see when you're booting up the Raspberry Pi in favor of a splash screen, which is a lot prettier. And you could also now enable login prompts. So I don't have it, I have it automatically logged in, but you could check that out later. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that they actually replaced their default wallpaper with the Raspberry Pi logo in the middle with actually pretty wallpapers and gives you a couple of selections and I'm gonna show you a couple of uh, wallpapers that they have pre-installed. Now, here, you're gonna notice that they also installed a new application called Sense Hat Emulator. Um, so if you play around with this, you could use the emulator to play around with. One of the nicest things that I think they did was replace the old browser with the Chromium browser. Now this also includes two plugins, one which is called uBlock, and the other one is called H264FI, which forces YouTube to use, uh, to, uh, to play the video in a format that the Pi's hardware could use. So you're gonna notice it's much smoother when I'm playing this video and even in full screen. Now, on top of that, you're gonna also notice one of my favorite things that they did do uh, is install the VNC server, which can be accessed through the Raspberry Pi configuration, and you can just enable it through a tab. As soon as you hit OK, you're gonna see a brand new icon pop up on the top right next to your clock, and that's where you can configure all your options for the VNC, which is um, password, users, encryption, whatever you want. Now, along with this, they also included uh, the VNC viewer software. So now you could actually use the VNC viewer software to connect to a computer that has VNC server installed. So I'm gonna demonstrate this by connecting to a Windows 10 machine that I have on my network using this VNC software through my Pi, which is not bad at all actually. It, it functions just like it would if you were to install it on a normal desktop. So here we have it. Uh, everything runs fine, um, runs like it should. Now, the, the last thing, you're gonna notice that they updated all the icons. Uh, they actually put a lot of work and emphasis on the icons for Raspberry Pi to make everything look pretty. They also updated some text, and it's a lot more stable than what it used to. So guys, thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little review. I wanna ask if you guys know any channels to recommend that I could do the shout out of the week. Leave a little description and a little channel name and I'll go through them and see what it's all about. Now, if you haven't done so already, please hit the little subscribe button to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. Now, once you get back in, you're gonna be able to load your ROMs and play the game that you wanna play. 